Hey there, family. Welcome back. Here we are again before you. I'm Pastor Key here with uh, Pastor Shanisha, who is the pastor of Pillars of Truth. How are you on today, Pastor? Hey, I am great. I am great. Uh, I praise God for just being alive today. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. It certainly is a blessing to be here. And listen, family, uh, it is just an, an, an amazing moment to be here and I'll be able to uh, go before you. And as she unfolds uh, Marion the fantasy uh, with us, as she has uh, done so already uh, on series one and uh, episode one and two, where she uh, just gave us some insight as to uh, what Mary and the Fantasy uh, looks like, what it stands to. And I promise you by the end, you guys will get to hear and understand uh, why this was labeled Mary and the Fantasy. Uh, but she left us uh, episode two. Uh, she left us and she uh, left us with that uh, it was just too late by then. That was the ending. It was too late. She had been in the marriage uh, longer than what she was in uh, her first marriage. And there so in this result of this marriage, there came three um, beautiful children, three amazing, amazing children yes. Uh, yes. from this right here, from this marriage. And um, that would be that you were now at six children, correct? At, by this time? By or, this time, I am at two, three, yes, five, five. Let's say, okay. let's say, let's say two, three, yeah, six. Yeah, the, the one I adopted, I had Right, doctor. there you go. <laughs> By the time I had the last one, I get you. Yeah, yeah. And so if you watch it, you'll, you'll, you'll see that she is not only a biological mother, but also she adopted a child. Um, and so she is now in this second marriage and has six uh, children now to ma maintain. Um, and now um, with everything, I'm not going to give you all the detail. I want to encourage you guys to go to YouTube and, uh, you know, get the just, just watch it. And I promise you, you know, you'll get to do it, but we're going to move on and we're here and we're going to go into episode three. And as I said, we're, we're, we're wrapping this up where she says now this second marriage has come to an end. And, uh, if I could just uh, let the viewers know, you know, why is the marriage, the second marriage, why is it ending yet again? Uh, well, he had to, uh, come to grips with the fact that, uh, he didn't know um, how to love me, right? And he didn't know, um, you know, he basically, after the conversation, after the, after the confusion and after what, like, what are you doing? Uh, it was like, you know, maybe one day I will know how to love you. And I'm like, hey, after how many years? <laughs> you know, but at the end of the day, you know, we never had uh, that conversation of what it looks like. Uh, to love me. And he never paid enough attention to see uh, what, how I move and what makes me happy and what doesn't, you know? And so yeah. we like that we were busy from the beginning because yeah, after yeah. the first marriage, I already had two children. Right, um, right. I was in the industry, I had a lot going on yeah. and, you know, trying to work, trying to survive, you know, yeah. and, you know, the second marriage, we just were busy from the beginning. Uh, I'm going to the police academy. He's trying to find a good job, you know, mm -hmm. and um, he's wrestling with people at work, you know, and he's in the ministry. We are, I mean, we're doing it. And from the outside looking in, it looked like, you know, mm -hmm. uh, two people who love each other, who are trying to do the best they can, right, mm -hmm. with what they have. But then at the end of the day, inside the house, it was very different. You know, it's very different. He's in one room, I'm in the other. And we were always friends. We were always friends. We were always able to talk. But we didn't talk per se about anything. We had great biblical conversation, great conversations about the Lord. Uh, you know, and I always tried to pay attention uh, to what he needed and what he was going through. Um, yeah. But at the same time, I don't think he knew at this time in his life how to pay attention to me. You know, and I hadn't required you know, him to do pretty much anything because I never really communicated it because I'm trying to be so strong and do everything, you know? <laughs> and so, uh, you know, it, it, we got lost somewhere in there. And uh, by the time we tried to bring it back, you know, a couple little girls in there somewhere doing some yeah. crazy stuff. Uh -huh. But uh, by the time we tried to bring it back, you know, it, 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 I was all set. I was mm. done. Mm. Okay. So, 
most would say that in the marriage, you know, uh, cheating would be the number one. But you changed the whole thing. Uh, you said some you girls were in there somewhere, but uh, the main thing was he didn't know how to love me. Um, and it was nothing like the first marriage, um, but totally different. And um, from what I'm hearing is the communication failed from after the marriage, after you guys got married, it became a big problem uh, where as to uh, you thought he should have known, did you think he should have known um, these things? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. You know why I thought that? Because I was sensitive to what I'm sensitive to what people need. I pay attention to people and uh, whether it be tough love or, 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 or just I'm loving on you or I'm giving or whatever it is. I try to pay attention, you know, and um, I was so busy, like first marriage, she cheated three times. I'm like, oh, man, this is crazy. Second marriage is like, oh, we have some common ground. We have things in common. Uh huh. Um, very, he's very, you know, friendly. Uh, yeah. and he's a nice guy, you know, yeah. that's that, that, that counted for something. Right. And uh -huh. for me, I'm in the church. I'm busy. I have children. He is accepting my children. So I'm thinking, yeah, this is, this is a man right here. This is what it is. But, um, when you fine tune things, when you get into things, then you discover like, wait a minute. Uh, he missed the beat on this one. He missed this. He missed that. Uh, why is he missing this? You know, why is he not paying attention to me? And why am I giving everything I got? And he has no idea what I need. He has mm -hmm. no idea, you know? And so, so I would let little things, um, for example, he would say he never cheated. <laughs> mm -hmm. He would say he never cheated, but uh, I understood that, um, you know, there were some girls in a way and there were some things clouding his mind, his good judgment, right? And we could have ironed those things out, but the communication was never there in a sense where um, it would have got us through those conversations, okay. you know, because um, he didn't know, um, he didn't know uh, per se how to talk to me or how to communicate certain things yeah. to where I would understand it, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I don't tolerate too, too many games, yeah. you know? So it was like, let's just call this what it is. Let's not really put a name to it and just keep on moving. And mm -hmm. I said, no, we're going to put a name to it because it can't happen again. Uh -huh. It can't happen again. And yeah. so we were on two different pages, but I let those little conversations uh, blow up because he just had no idea what I needed. You know, there was a time where I was, um, I was pregnant uh, between uh, two of my children. Okay. And I had a miscarriage. Mm -hmm. And so when I had a miscarriage, uh, you know, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't understand the pregnancy period. Mm -hmm. So my mind went somewhere else. Like mm -hmm. this man, no, <laughs> this man, no, I'm with him and him only. So why in the world would he question my pregnancy? W what is that about? Mm -hmm. You know? So at the end of the day, um, I miscarried that pregnancy and he didn't know how to be there. He didn't even want to be there because we had enough children. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so that played on my mind. So the, things like that, where you would need to be really cohesive to get through something like that, he would need it. He would have needed to know how I felt to get through that. And I just, you know, I just said, no, nah, it's not there. He don't, he don't get it. He don't mm -hmm. get it. He don't get me. And so, um, and, and that's without communicating who I am to him, mm -hmm. you know? So that, um, yeah, those little conversations, I, I let them blow up and I just use, I use them as an excuse to just go. It's mm -hmm. gone. No. Ooh. Yeah. You, you went and um, you, you definitely spoke about your miscarriage as you released it in um, episode, you know, two. And um, I wanted to just touch on that a little, but you already spoke on it and um, definitely in a miscarriage, um, you would think that it would bring two together closer um and i really wanted to bring your your faith your faith <laughs> out in this um because you know i have to say this this that that's who you are and um i never want to discredit and and not pull that out because in all of this one would say where is god she says she's this she said that and so we definitely want to give that opportunity because i feel like in this relationship god really 
he was always the root. He was always the foundation, but alongside how, how is it being this woman of God? Could you have done something different? Although you were still saved, could something have been done differently as the woman of God that you were then and that you are now? Could you have done something differently? <laughs> saying that as a woman of faith. Ooh, yes, ma'am. It's, it's so many things. So, so many things that could have been done differently. You know, for one, um, the big, the biggest thing that sticks out to me, because like I said, I was always walking with God. Mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes we get into the ministry, we get into what we're doing, we're getting into where God is leading us, right? And then you forget to balance everything. Right. So you forget about the balance. And for me, um, I was a one man show. It was me, my mind, whatever, I, how I, I played it out. That's uh -huh. how I wanted it to turn out. And we yeah. all know that's not how life happens at all. <laughs> you know, so it was like um, I just had an expectation that was way too high, mm. way too high for the person that was in front of me, you know. And yeah. if my mind could conceive it, if I could think it, then you could do yeah. it. And uh -huh. that was my thought process, but that was so far from the truth. Yeah. It's almost like um, I saw the end from the beginning of where I wanted to be, and I, but, but I didn't want to go through the steps to get there. Mm. Or not that I didn't want to, I didn't pay attention to them. You know, I didn't pay attention and say, look, we got to go one step at a time. Uh -huh. You can't just be married and it be successful. There are so many steps that it takes to get to where you want to be, you know, and you automatically feel like, yo, uh, I got a good guy. I'm going to be happy. You know, this is going to this is going to do it so I can have my family here and I can go ahead and, and keep running, keep doing what I got to do. I already know I got to cook. I got to do the laundry. I got to pick up the kids. You know, I got to find some rest. I got to go to work. You know, I got to make sure he's straight. We got to have date night. But in all that, there is so much more. It's mm -hmm. so many details in the middle of that, that yeah. you don't pay attention to and you let them build up. And then once they build up, it's almost too late. So you got to really take time out. It's just like, as if you were in the church all your life, you're in the church all your life. And then you start somewhere in there, you started playing church. It mm -hmm. started becoming tradition. It started becoming just a thing, you know, and you never take time to cultivate, you know, mm -hmm. or to eat spiritually or to recognize God, reverence God, communicate with God. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then we just have a, a, a big mess. Yeah. You know, and, and then and then you're trying to lead people and, and to where, you know, where you lead people to. Yeah. You know, you don't have the relationship that you need yourself. Yeah. So it, it was a it was a lot of things um, that I could have done uh, different, you know, mm -hmm. especially um, getting out of my head and getting out of my own way. And then taking a step at a time. But a lot of times when you don't have people counseling or helping, you really, you, you don't get that until you have to look back. You know, mm -hmm. you don't get that. And then at the same time, um, you know, when you, uh, how do I say it? When you're going through it, it's, it's, it's almost like um, <laughs> you're watching things take place instead of actually showing up and being a part of it, you know? So if I watch him, uh, for example, go in a room and be depressed, maybe. I'm watching it, but I got to be a part of it. So I'm thinking, okay, let me just cook dinner. He'll come out. He got to come out the room. We got to eat dinner. We got to go here. I'm waiting for the next move instead of addressing, hey, what's going on in your mind? Mm -hmm. You know, what's going on with you? You know? And so sometimes uh, those things were going too long. And I'm thinking, oh, he's going to snap out of it because everything around him is going to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. No, nah, that's not the way it go all the time, mm -hmm. you know? So mm -hmm. it's a lot of things uh, looking yep. back that uh, could have been addressed. Uh -huh. um, but especially the part where, you know, I made this thing up in my mind that everything was going to be all right no matter what, because I know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And I had no clue what I yeah. was doing. I had no clue. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah but I was walking with the Lord, you know, I was, I was, yes. I was doing my with the Lord and I, and I love the Lord. He loved the Lord. And we yeah. just going, you know, we just yeah. going, we helping up young people. So we think and uh, teaching the Bible studies and we doing, yes. the thing, you know, and so we dedicated a lot of time uh, to the Lord, uh, but not allowing uh, God to be the center 
of what we were doing in the home. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a big, that was a big deal. Uh huh. Yeah, that, yeah, definitely. And you said so much wholesome stuff there. And, and, and one of the things I heard was um, not confronting what is in front of you. And um, certainly uh, many people, uh, I'm sure that they have experienced this right here where they um, thought they were doing it the right way. And they thought that God was, they, they were, um, how do you say it? I believe they thought that they were considering God, you know, um, in it. Yeah. And um, sometimes we get um, into ourselves where we kind of push God out of the way and not purposely, but because you got your focus on everything else. As you said, we were busy. We were trying to make it happen. We had this, we had kids, we had a house, we had, you had all these things that came. And so um, definitely um, I would say in this, you know, um, many, many people fail to confront when they see it and it's dead smack. Um, and some don't know how to confront. Um, and I, I can fully understand when you said, you know, I had to get out of me because I did that. That that's that's who I am. That's what I do, and um, is that it wasn't done purposely uh, to say, you know, I'm moving and I'm making these moves and I'm doing this, but because being so busy mm. in the marriage really uh, threw some things off. Is that fair to say? Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because yeah. I believe. Many people get so busy and wrapped up, um, and some people do it to hide. And um, I, 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 I do believe certainly that uh, if we don't confront it, the end result will end as what did what happened here. So because mm -hmm. there was no confront, because there was a buildup, unfortunately, you said it's too late now. This was the end of the road. Now, it, this was another chapter that needed to be closed. And um, when y'all decided, what it, when it was a decision that this was ending, <laughs> right? Who decision was it? Was it yours? Was it the husband? Or did you guys come together? It was mine. It was yours. Okay, yeah, okay. And was this a, a spiritual move? Was this something that you had consulted the Lord with, or you just said, I got, I have to do this for me? No, I didn't consult the Lord. I was out of there. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, it was, it was, you know, um, one of the last conversations was, like I said, I used to use the small things and blow them up. You know, I had yeah. heard uh, another, a woman on his answer machine. He forgot I set up the voice. Mm. Lord, let it go through. Mm. Jesus. Okay, I left for a second, didn't I? You did, and I just sent the text to you. I was like, it muted. So it shut off, right? Yeah, it shut off. Okay. Uh, okay. It's still recording right now. Mm -hmm. And so um, I will have to edit, edit it. And I'll okay. just tell, try to clip this part out mm -hmm. and just skip to it. But um, where was I at? But what's the last thing you heard? Uh, you set up the voicemail. He forgot that you did yeah, so, the voicemail. Yeah, I used I use the voicemail. Uh -huh. uh, I took his voicemail and I used it as an opportunity, um, you know. Uh, but when I heard the voicemail, I was utter. I was upset. I was like, wait a minute. He yeah. was already in the shower, getting dressed, getting ready to go. But oh. his phone had rang. The young lady left the voicemail. I pressed a button. I listened to it. Okay. I said, oh, 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 he came out the bathroom smelling good. I was like, oh, okay, I don't know what that's about, but yeah. I asked him, about, you know, he started blinking a hundred miles an hour and I know he lying. I'm like, okay. So we have a conversation and um, yes. I didn't like the way the conversation went. Okay. And so I, I told him I was done. 
period, you know? Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the day, uh, he tried to have a couple more conversations. Mm -hmm. He was like, you acting like there's nothing left. I said, there is nothing left. Mm -hmm. You know, there's absolutely nothing left. Um, but at the same time, I had uh, got wind of uh, some information and mm -hmm. I said, oh, no, I'm not, I can't play the game. Yeah. So when I got wind of that information, then I went and I started talking to a gentleman, mm -hmm. you know? And so uh, once I started talking to someone else, you know, that was, a, th there was no going back. And so even in the midst of that, he's talking to somebody, I'm talking to somebody mm -hmm. and, you know, he's trying to piece it back together, but I'm saying, nah, I'm not going to do it. So I walked away. Okay. Okay. I know that was a lot, right? That was like, okay. Okay. I, I know, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. You you you're fine because as I, I heard you correctly, uh, you know, um he did attempt to come and talk. And um do you believe that he continued to do what um what he was doing because you had told him that you were done in that moment? Uh no. I believe that he stopped everything and said, oh, I got to fix this. And uh, how I believe that is because he had talked to some of my family members okay. and they were trying to encourage him and tell him, just mm -hmm. go for it, man. Just talk to yeah. her, you uh -huh. know, um, but by then it was too late. Okay. Late. Too late. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, I, I had to, I had to ask that um, because some people would uh, get a, a bad thought about that and say, well, you said it was over, you know? Um, and, and certainly we have to understand that time is valuable. And we have to understand that this, these things, it had happened and accumulated over a time. And um, certainly uh, you could have done something differently, but I, I believe from what I'm hearing that there was truly um, no effort until it got real bad. Is that, that fair to say? Um, on his part, right. Okay. You know, yeah. I, I let things build up. Yeah. Right? yeah. And uh, we would continue to uh, do things that he liked. And right. like, I was thinking if he's in a room and I, and I make his, his, his everything all right around him, Okay, he would come out the room and everything would be fine. Mm. He had to be thinking the same thing. Like, okay, we still gonna have date night. We still gonna do this and that. And so she gonna be fine. You know, we were two laid back type people. Mm. And so we just swore everything was everything, you know? And, uh, you know, today I'm sure we're older, right? If we had a, yes. if we had a do over, it wouldn't have went that way. You know, I, I know, I know, I know much more. <laughs> Oh, much more than I knew back then. But back right, then right. it was what it was. You know, you're living in that moment. And, um, you know, there's no, you know, you go to church, you got to put your best foot forward. There's no counseling. There's no going in there sad. You leave all that at the door. You go in, you praise God and you, and you, and you love on the people that are there. And then you go back home and you pick that back up, you know, and then you say, you know, you may talk to the Lord a little bit about about it but you act like you got it under control like you don't even need the lord help <laughs> you know? like hey i got this I, I know what i'm doing but at the same time um god had should have been a center and and, and there there should have been a lot of other things pushed aside uh for a second you know mm -hmm. uh but like i said inside of it uh we just too busy people mm -hmm. too busy parents to you know too busy you know just trying to you know make it yeah. You know, so we didn't, um, we didn't, I didn't take time to tell him how I felt about a lot of things. Mm -hmm. mm, man, listen, man, that was a lot. That was a lot. And certainly I know it was a lot for you to um, be able to say that and uh, let our viewers know that in this marriage, we were busy. We were yet still young. We were trying to be uh, what we know that we wanted to be. You guys were uh, in, it, you were in the academy. You guys were building. And mm -hmm. along the way, really time just slipped away. 
Yeah. And so what, what, what I want the viewers to understand that all of this happens in the marriage. And the biggest thing that uh, one could do is not confront, not address, um, not say, hey, let's slow down for a moment and let's redirect. And um, I, from what I'm hearing, this this is what I'm what I'm getting from what I'm hearing from you. And you just tell me if I if I'm getting it wrong or something. But this, got- <laughs> this is what I'm getting. And I, I certainly want the viewers to understand that with all of this, this has happened. And even with God, even serving the Lord, even being the Bible school uh, uh, and the teachers and and all of that, still there was a mishap that happened, and mm-hmm. it proved the same. Um, that yes, I love the Lord. Yes, I serve the Lord. Yes, but I believe that this marriage was a teaching opportunity for both. Um, and I do believe that you experienced it so that one can understand that you got to look at it differently. Because while I'm hearing you speak today, you're saying if it was done differently, what, what God has shown me, then it would have came, the outcome would have been differently. That fair to say? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I, I, I'm definitely hearing correctly. And, and so I just want to wrap this up. I want to wrap this up because this right here, you know, you guys will get to um, certainly ask questions. You can go on YouTube because I have a lot more questions, but I want to <laughs> get through it. I'm telling you because I, I'm trying to wrap it up. It's, it's, it's cute, as cute as I can um, <laughs> because you guys can go on YouTube because I'm going to be one of the ones that's asking questions and um, she will uh, respond back Um certainly because this is a space that she has allowed us to come in and to be able to see, not to judge, but to get understanding um, um, what happened and what was the outcome. So we wrap this up. He, you know, you, you both, it just didn't work. And now we're at the end. The divorce has happened. Okay. You got to go your separate way. What, what was the, the, um, what was it that you guys said? How did you guys say, cause you got kids, right? You got, you, you, you got three that you got to consult him about. So just yep. quickly, can you say, okay, the divorce happened. What was that plan with the children? Divorce happened. Yep. yep. Listen, if you don't move out, I'm moving out. He okay. didn't move out. I moved out. When I moved out, I was still in that same city. And because I didn't want to do anything crazy uh, because of how it transpired, yeah. what I did was I said, listen, I'm moving to the Carolinas. Uh-huh. And that was a whole another story. That was okay. a whole another argument. Okay. And then um, I said, listen, whatever it takes, it'll work out. You know, mm-hmm. so I, I was never trying to keep the kids from or anything like that. It's mm-hmm. just whatever it took, it's going to work out, but I got to go, <laughs> yeah. got to go. I got to save me, you know? Yes. And so I thought, you know, I said, um, you know, I have been looking at the Carolinas. My grandfather had been taking me uh, back and forth for every year. We used to go down there. So I used to love it, love it. And I thought it would be a great place uh, to raise kids. You know, yes. I, I was gone uh-huh. just like that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And he yeah. had to deal with it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that- Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I wanted to hear, because after being in marriage for so long, um, people uh, have this image where, okay, you're leaving, you're taking the kids, you're taking them from their father and all these other things. And so, um, although there was still maybe a fight, I feel there was a fight because you wanted to hold on to something that was not there, I believe, on his end. Um, And I believe that it was to hold on to to make it look one way. And um, I believe that you were in the business of doing that. And so there um, you said you had to take a moment and think about you because for some time you had really not considered you um, during your first marriage and now the second one. And now you said, I got to go. The kids is yours, we made them together, but we can reason about that and that you were reasoning about. And so I want to leave the people with knowing that although that, that that left. Um, I don't believe that you left with any um thing where you wanted to harm him, um, oh. meaning uh, make him suffer. Right, right, right. No, no suffering. No okay, suffering. okay, okay. I, I, you know, he was gonna suffer. It, it's, it's, it was no way not to. But mm-hmm. um, at the same time, we were both gonna suffer something, you know, because when a divorce happens, oh, it's it's like a death. 
you know, it's really a uh, chain that's broken, you yeah. know? And so um, we had to see what that looked like. We had to try to bounce back uh, from mm-hmm. that and take any backlash or whatever, you know, yeah. people in the church, oh, I thought you guys were happy, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, we getting a divorce. Uh-huh. Ain't nothing y'all can do, no. Mm-hmm. You know, and so that's just how I was built, you know. Yeah. And so, you know, just another thing to wrestle with. But mm-hmm. took my kids, came to the Carolinas, and uh, I just didn't look back. Didn't look back. No. Man, listen, listen, y'all. We we got we gotta cut this this part right now <laughs> uh, because it's so much packed in it, and certainly. Um, you know, saying you you you've given us great insight um, on this marriage and uh, given us some key things to think about. Um, so certainly, we're gonna wrap this up. We're we're just so excited to be able to come before you, and um, I, I thank you, Pastor Shanisha, for uh, giving us and uh, for giving it to us as, as sweet as you could possibly do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I praise God for that and for your rawness and your truth and really um how you uh experienced it and allowing us to to see the inside um of what that looks like um but I, I'm just gonna be quiet and I'm gonna let you have the last words um before we go off oh well I just hey listen thank you for having me you know you keep asking the questions I keep answering them I I I'd be nervous over here, <laughs> like, oh Lord, she gonna bring it all out of me. But um, I praise God, and like I said, whoever uh, can take something from it and learn from it, mm-hmm. you know, praise God. You just, yeah. just give God all the glory because uh, certainly I didn't go uh, through it for it to just, um, you know, just just be a part of just me, you know. Yeah. And so I I I do enjoy. Um, I don't enjoy telling all my business, but I do enjoy helping people so if it takes telling on my business to do it <laughs> i guess yeah. i i will oh. you know it, it, the best way i i know how you know right but i praise god for you and your ministry pastor key you blessing me uh oh uh, god bless you i i'm telling you it's it's a great thing we 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 certainly have great conversations but like i said y'all y'all gotta go to youtube pillars of truth uh youtube and certainly check out uh series one episodes one two and three and uh just put your questions down in there um so that you could get uh some clarity because if you didn't catch something on here it was meant to be that way <laughs> it was meant to be that way <laughs> uh-huh so uh don't 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 be afraid but certainly go and do that and uh subscribe to it uh as well all right we love y'all so much and uh, we'll see you on the next episode